screen, you In this tutorial, we're gonna try and tackle Glenn Campbell's solo on a live recording that I found of him performing on a TV show with his band um, for Gentle On My Mind. He played the solo on the acoustic guitar, so we're gonna do that as well. Um, it's very advanced, no getting around it. He's a absolutely fantastic guitar player. And I'm gonna play it nice and slow. I'm gonna show you the tabs. We're gonna get our fingers on it note by note. And then for me anyway, it was just really a matter of having to pull out the metronome and kind of working these riffs up to full speed, um, starting pretty slow. We're at 109 BPM on the recording or 108, it fluctuates a little bit. I think I started around, I wanna say 60, 65 BPM. And then just slowly, you know, got my fingers on everything. I memorized the solo and then I slowly worked it up about 5 BPM at a time and you'll start real fast, you'll start realizing which of these licks are going to give you trouble and then you just got to spend some time with them at a manageable tempo, slowly getting them up to speed. All right, so let me demonstrate it nice and slow so you can see it um, kind of in slow motion. And some of the riffs are harder to play in slow motion because, you know, you got to, um, there's a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs that happen really fast. Um, okay, so enough said. Let's get going, here's how it looks. One, two, three, four, one, two, go. Okay, so there you have it. Um, you might think, well, that wasn't very slow. Well, compared to the actual recording, that is pretty slow. He's really ripping here, guys. But this is a, even if you just pick out some of these riffs and, and work them up to tempo, I mean, these are really great jazzy, country, bluesy riffs here that are, are just a lot of fun. So let's just dissect it riff by riff, okay? Starting at the beginning. The nice thing is, for those of you that have spent some time learning the diatonic scale, he stays in a lot of these positions pretty well. Position six diatonic in the key of E flat. Um, we got the capo on the first fret. When we're playing chords and stuff, we're kind of thinking the key of D, but it's not gonna be that helpful for us when we're le learning this solo. So we're gonna think of it in the key of E flat. Um, so we got position six and E flat in our first lick. Sure enough, I think he actually picks every note, but uh, it's just a chromatic walk up. When we get up to full tempo, more power to you if you can do that. If you can, that's about how fast it is. And it's just rolling these fingers on, starting on the eighth fret of the B string, nine, 10, 11. And at the very least, you wanna pick both that first note and the last note right in tempo. Okay? And then continuing on, we're just going back and forth a couple times between eight and 11. All right, so that's the first little bit. One, two, three, four. Now this next one just follows the box shape too. D string, eight to 10. And then eight to 10 again on G. Eight to 10 on, I'm sorry, eight to 11 on B. And then roll that pinky finger over to the 11th fret. Back to eight of B, 10 of high E, eight, 11 of B, 8th fret of G, and then a pull off from 9 to 8 on B, and then we have this series of riffs. Let's get just that much. So we've got 10 of G, 8 of B, 9, 11, 8 of high E. Now we're just gonna change that G string to the 9th fret. Everything else is the same. And now we're gonna walk the scale up, that diatonic scale, starting on the eighth fret of G. 
All right, so that phrase so far is. Then we do this crazy riff. But again, once we figure out that, that looks impossible, right? But once we figure out, we're just gonna use some pull-offs here and we're gonna go down the scale. That's just right down that position six scale. And then 10th fret of G, nine, eight, seven. All right, whole thing. That one's actually easier, faster. Okay, and then we're gonna move up here. This is, this is one that took me a long time to work up to full tempo. Don't let it frustrate you. It's a really cool riff, looks like this. Let's get just that much. It's just these pull-offs and it's easy to do it at this tempo. The hard thing is just working that up to speed. He goes so fast. Um, we're just, now we're in, what position are we in now, guys? Key of E flat. We're shifting over to position three diatonic of E flat, right? So we've got sixth fret of B, third fret of high E, and then we're doing this four, three, four, three, six, pull-offs, that's what it is. But I'm just picking that fourth fret the first time, and then I'm picking that sixth fret on the B string. So one, two, and three, and four, and. So on that fifth time, we're gonna go up to um, the sixth fret of high E instead of going to that B string. Okay, and then we're gonna start this walk down here which looks like this. It's pretty much following the scale with some blue notes in there and a little chromaticism. So we're going four, three. All right, it's a really cool riff. So we've got uh, four, three, fifth fret of B, third fret of high E again. Now sixth fret of B, fifth fret of G, four, three on B. Now five. 4, 3 on G, 6th fret of D, and now we're into this next riff. This is another one of the tough ones. All right, and then we're halfway done with the solo, and the, those contain, this, this one and the one before are really two of the, the kind of cruxes of the solo that are really hard to get. Um, so let's learn it. Let's get our fingers on it here. So we're, we just got done with... Uh, now we're here, we're gonna do this. Get just that much. So we're still in position three here. We've got five of D, three of G. Slide up to six of uh, G, to four of B. Now slide up again to 10 of G. We're back in this position six, right? Eight of B, eight of high E, and 11 of high E. Continuing on, we do this. So we just go back down to eight, 11, then this kind of classic slide up from 10 to 12, 11 of B, back down on G, 12 to 10, to eight, then 10 of D to 10 of G, and back to eight. And again. All right, and that's gonna get us to the second half of this solo. And this next part almost feels like a break. It's a cool, cool part, it's just kind of a bluesy. All right, so we're just right in this position six. We're changing one note though. We've got the walk in is 10 of D, eight of G, and then we've got 10 and 10 of G and B with a little half bend back down. Eight, and back to it, and again. Eight, back to 10, another bend. Now go over to the D string, 10th fret, back to eight of G. Then we've got this riff next. All right, we're just walking down the scale. We're changing one note to the dominant seventh here, but we're going, the walk in is just the scale. Eight, 10, eight, 11. 
Then roll that back to the 11th fret of high E, 8th fret of B, and now 9th fret of high E, 8, 11th fret of B, 8 of G, 9, 8, 10, 8. And now we're going to have kind of the same types of riffs that we had in the first half for this part. But we're going to hold it. We already know that one. 10, 8, 9, 11, 8. We're going to hold that then do change just that first note again, that 9th fret of G. Hold it. And then we're going to do this arpeggio, which is 8th uh, fret of G. All right, so we're starting on the 8th fret of G, 8, 9 of B, 8 of E, 11, pull it off to 8, 9 of B. 10 of G, pull off to 8, slide down to 7. All right, and that's going to get us into this um, kind of closing section, and it looks harder than it is. And this is one of those riffs that's easier to play fast. All right, so we're just, we're back in position three here. We've got uh, third fret of the B string, four, five, six. We're just, same thing we started out with. We're just chromatically walking up with each finger. And when we get up to full speed, if you can pick every single one of those by alternating your pick. Uh, more power to you. For me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this third fret and this sixth fret every time. Okay, and we're just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then when we hit that sixth fret for the final time, we do this. All right, just that much. We've got six on B string, four, three to the G string, five, four, three, back to five. Five, three, down over to the D string, five, three. Now another chromatic walk down on the A string, five, four, three. And then the next riff is this. Another really cool riff <laughs> that he just pulls out of nowhere in his live improv. All right, so we're on the third fret here. Down to one, three, five, D string, three, five, um, three, four, oh no, out of the scale there, and then um, three on the B string, four, five, four on the high E string to three, to uh, six, four, three, and then we're on the fourth fret of B, and we're gonna do this little walk down, sixth fret of high E as well. So we got four, six, four, three, six, three, open to the capo or the first fret, and then two of G. And that's the whole solo, okay? So don't um, let yourself get too frustrated. These are awesome riffs, no matter what tempo you take them at. This is just a great exercise in studying a fantastic guitar player. Uh, working it up to full speed will take some time. After I transcribed the solo, what I did was I committed it to memory so I could play through the whole thing nice and fluidly, very slowly with a metronome. This is a solo where you got to use the metronome. Um, really will help if you can memorize it and play it at about 60 beats per minute with the metronome first, then just work it up. As you're working it up to speed, you'll notice the riffs that you're having trouble with and you're just going to have to spend some time with those at a slower tempo and work them up kind of individually. And eventually you'll get there. So when you're ready, you can play it along with me at full speed with the metronome. Thank you.